Station, can you hear me? Station, this is Michael Barbaro, host of The Daily. How do you hear me? Do you hear me? Hey, Michael, we've got you loud and clear. Welcome to the International Space Station. For the past few months, a highly unusual situation has been playing out in outer space. Crew transport vehicles into the pad. Two American astronauts, Sonny Williams and Butch Wilmore. Butch and Sonny arriving on level 12. Last look at planet Earth uh, for a while, saying hi to us. Hi, Sonny. Left Earth on a test flight of a new Boeing spacecraft that was supposed to bring them to the International Space Station for just a few days. Three, two, one, ignition. And liftoff of Starliner and Atlas V. They got there on June 6th of 2024, but their spacecraft malfunctioned. NASA and Boeing identified helium leaks and experienced issues with the Spacecraft Reaction Control System, or RCS, thrusters as Starliner approached the station. And NASA determined that it was not safe enough for a return flight. And so what was supposed to be a roughly eight-day stay in space has now turned into more than nine months. There's Butch coming in through the hatch. Sonny and Butch are now scheduled to return, we think, in the next few days. And so a few days ago, with the help of NASA, I was able to ask both of the astronauts about this very strange turn of events. Is that Sonny? It's either Sonny or Butch. So yes, it's Sonny. (laughs) Uh, Sonny and Butch, welcome to The Daily. Uh, Sonny, this is definitely the first time I have conducted an interview with somebody who is upside down. Congratulations to you for that milestone among the many in your career. Oh, now you're right. I just wanted to demonstrate that my hair stands up even if I'm upside down or upside right. You have epic hair. And I really just want to thank you for making time for us. I I wanted to start by asking you both how you think about the situation that you're in right now. Some people call you stranded. Others, and I believe your bosses among them, deeply resist that phrase. Maybe you think of it as a work trip that got really extended by months and months and months. So if not stuck exactly, how do you describe this scenario you find yourselves in? I would say it's work. It's fun. It's been trying at times, no doubt. Mm -hmm. Um, But uh, stranded, no. Stuck, no. Abandoned, no. There are no guarantees. You never know what might happen. Because uh, the plan is rarely actually do we ever go by the plan because this is not an easy business that we take part in. It is very difficult. Human spaceflight is tough. And uh, sometimes you run into situations that are unexpected, and we found ourselves in one. And that's why uh, we continue to to stay here and work and uh, actually just do what we are called on to do and to support our nation's goals in space and exploration. Sonny, what is this bonus time, let's call it that, allowed you to do, both as an astronaut and perhaps just as a human, that you could never have done if this had all gone very smoothly with this docking? You know, honestly, my previous two flights were long duration. And what I really liked about that is you could uh, bring a lot of people along with you because it's a longer journey on a short flight, a shuttle flight, or this test flight. You you just don't have that opportunity because you're super, super busy. And not saying that we're not busy up here. We're always doing experiments or maintenance or whatever. But having been up here for a while, you get a little bit of more time to enjoy the view out the window. You get a little more time to adapt to space. You get a little more time to actually talk to people on the ground and bring them along and have them understand exactly what we're doing. So I think that's one of the biggest benefits um, from being here for a long duration and really being able to explain all that the International Space Station has to offer and what our goals are as we go further than low Earth orbit. While you've been up there, I don't need to tell you this, a lot has happened down here, including natural disasters. And some of them, I imagine, have been visible to you, given your vantage point. And I'm thinking of the California wildfires or the hurricane that struck your hometown, in both your cases, right, of of Houston. Can you describe in some detail, because I think, your perspective on this visually is so unique. What those looked like from the space station, I have this sense that they must have been slow motion disasters that you could see from space. 
Yes, we can. I, I can tell you, uh, our first thought, of course, is it's not the view that we see. It's right. what's taking place real time on the ground below us as people are going through some very difficult and trying times, some life and death situations. And we know that. But, yeah, to see a hurricane from space is truly amazing because you can see the power in the clouds. You truly can. Um, to see the smoke rise from uh, the west coast of our United States when in, and realizing all that was taking place there, it's uh, we're heartbroken for all that was going on. What they're dealing with when compared to what we're dealing with, I mean, we're dealing with nothing compared to those type of things that are life-changing. This is, this is life-changing in certain respects for us, but it's nothing compared to what uh, the the devastation that we have seen uh, take place below us. And so, uh, you know, our prayers go out to them as people rebuild and change uh, and, and go forward with their lives. Right. Were either of your homes damaged in that, in that hurricane? I, I, think, I believe I read that perhaps one of them was. We had a little bit of damage, a little roof damage, and uh, so we we got a new roof out of the deal. So that that was that was probably needed anyway. So it worked out in our in our in our favor. Okay, but I do have to ask: How do you arrange for a new roof from outer space, or do you just have to cede that kind of ground to somebody else in your family? I had some interaction with it, but uh, yeah, a lot of folks on the ground, friends, people from church coming in and helping out. And then, of course, uh, I can't do much from here. So my wife uh, Deanna taking charge there and making it happen. I'm I'm curious about the psychology of of being in this place for a lot longer than than you expected, and and forgive me for asking this because it's such a unique situation. Is there anything approaching space therapy? I mean, who do you talk to about the fundamental weirdness of this unexpected situation? This is something. This situation that we wound up in is something that our has have prepared us for from day one. I mean, we came into the military, both of us as uh, young fledglings, and we started uh, in, in some very challenging scenarios. And those things truly prepared us to compartmentalize, to set things aside uh, that, that, that really, if I can't affect something, why would I fret over it or, mm. or, 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 or worry about it or something or along those lines? We go forward, we compartmentalize, and we see what our tasks are. And that's what we've been trained to do over the course of a lifetime. Um, and, and that is actually easy. It's not easy, but it's something that we've been accustomed to and we kind of just fall into. Anything to add? Yeah. There's a huge support team for us uh, on the ground, including our families, of course, that, you know, they were expecting us to just be gone for a little while and then gone for a little longer time than that, you know, making sure the grass is cut, you know, just the simple things, but also the, the really important things like when natural disasters hit our hometown. So I think it's a, been a little bit more difficult for them. I, I'm hats off to my family, Butch's family for, you know, just marching through it. This is not necessarily their job. And, uh, you know, just having those conversations with people on the ground actually, to me, was really nice because I know folks were really ready to just support us up here and and change their plans for when we do come home, which will be a big party, I promise. <laughs> your, your spirits are both exceptionally high. I think anyone watching this can just feel that. I wonder what rituals you have established, either yourselves or together, to keep your spirits as high as they clearly are. You know, we have a pretty good gym up here. Uh, so both Butch and I are big fans of working out. And so <laughs> that is, uh, that's been, I think, one of those things that, you know, just even on the ground, you know, going for a run or going to the gym and lifting weights always makes you feel better. And that's a, a thing that we have to do here on a daily basis anyway. Um, you know, and of course, we've had conversations around the dinner table um, about, you know, Starliner, about, ISS about spacewalks and all that kind of stuff, as well as family and what's going down, what's going on down on the ground. So, yeah, I think just having conversations with each other, as well as our, our colleagues on the other end of the space station. Um, you know, we try to get together at least once a week and we've had a lot of holidays up here together as well. And uh, it's like a little family. I've got a lot of brothers and I'm pretty lucky for that. I'd also say that uh, NASA does a fantastic job of keeping us connected with our families and those that uh, we care about and care about us uh, that are on the planet while we're off the planet. They, they give us the means to call, do video calls, those type of things. And that really, really goes a long way to, to continue and help us uh, deal with all types of situations uh, that takes place in anyone's life, theirs included. But I know you have a, 
a child in their last year of high school, which is, I imagine, a, a, a tough year to miss. Oh, it is indeed tough. Um, I tell you what, my daughter has really learned a lot, and she is tough. And it does make your, your heart feel kind of good when your daughter says, you know, Dad, I, I didn't know how much I needed to you until you were gone. Oh. So that's, that's something that, you know, that, that makes you feel good as a dad. And my daughter, Logan, as well as my oldest daughter, Darren, who's in her second year of college. I'm so proud of them and for their strength and their resilience through all of this, because it has been trying for them as well. I understand that this is probably going to be your last trip to the International Space Station, and that the space station's overall days are numbered. There's a plan to decommission it fairly soon. So that makes me wonder what that's like for you, but also if you're tempted to, you know, slip a piece of paper or scratch somewhere on the walls of the station, Butch and Sonny were here 2024 to 2025. I mean, are there any tokens that you're going to leave behind? Hey, that's a good idea. I didn't think about that before. No, um, seriously, uh, you know, this is just an, a magical place. It's a wonderful place. And it we have our, like, I think our mindset has changed, you know, as, as things are getting closer. And I was like, okay, we're heading home. Um, and it makes you really want to enjoy every bit of your time that you have up here. You know, just, you know, joking around by floating upside down or this module is spectacular. It's beautiful, clean, uh, je the gem, the Japanese module. Uh, you can do flips and turns in here and you sort of feel like, yes, your days are numbered up here and you want to take advantage of everything that's microgravity while you can. Butch, that was a fantastic somersault. Still got it. <laughs> um, I really just want to thank you both for, for your time and I want to wish you a very safe return. After what you went through on the way up, which was really perilous. I mean, the thrusters went through real problems. I, I, I know your faith in NASA and all your colleagues is extremely high, but, you know, between you, me, and everybody listening in in Houston, are you nervous about the return trip? I don't think nervous is the is the term that I would use. I mean, you're cautious about anything. I mean, this is this is human spaceflight, and we're going to be inside of a plasma ball at 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit uh, as we enter the atmosphere. That's not something that you do often or do every day, and it's not something that uh, that uh, is is easily accomplished either. That's why there's only three spacefaring nations on the globe mm. that do this human spaceflight. Uh, it's not an easy business. So yeah, I mean, you're 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 nervous, no, cautious uh, in, in certain respects, but it's, eventually you get to the point where there's again there's there's nothing we can do about it. So we're no, not going to fret over that and uh, just trust that the systems work as the systems are are designed to work. Um, fortunately for us, we have a fantastic ops team in Mission Control down in Houston. That's why we're here. So yeah, it was fairly perilous out there on the on the we call it the V bar out in front of the space station as we were rendezvous rendezvousing. But our ops team came together and they got us docked, which made the, 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 all the difference, of course, uh, in us being here right now. So to them, we're grateful. There are a bunch of heroes down there. I've said it many times. I said it to them, and I'll say it to you as well. Uh, we're grateful for them. And uh, but going back, yeah, going back is just it's it's just a, it's a perilous a situation, but uh, certainly something we're prepared for. The ground teams are prepared for, and. Uh, and, and it's quite a, quite an exciting ride, to be honest with you, as well. So we're looking forward to it in that respect. And, and Sonny, my last question to you, what's the thing you're most looking forward to back here on Earth? Oh, there's a couple things. Um, really jumping in the ocean probably is top. But uh, pretty close after that, of course, is, is family and my dogs. I just can't, I can't wait to give them a big hug. <laughs> well, we wish you a very safe return. And thank you for your service to our country, and thank you for your time. Thank you, Michael. It's been a pleasure. Good luck. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you.